When people count using their hands, they do it like this. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. In the Polish hand magic trick, you remove one of the hands, so you're left with 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The trick is about multiplying two numbers, and I have two hands. So if I want to multiply 7 and 8, for instance, then I count the total number of raised fingers on my both hands, and that's the number of tens in my result. And then I multiply together the number of lowered fingers on my two hands, and that's the number of units in my result. So in this case, 7 times 8, I have 5 raised fingers, so that's 5 tens, 50, and I multiply the number of lowered fingers, which is 6. So the result is 56. Amazingly, it's correct. Let's try to put this on paper somehow. I will draw a vertical line for a raised finger and a horizontal line for a lowered finger. So in my case, the 7 looks like this and the 8 looks like this. And what did I do? Well, I took the total number of raised fingers on my two hands and I multiplied that by 10. So 5 times 10. And then I multiplied together the number of lowered fingers, which is 3 times 2. And the result is 50 plus 6, which is 56. Correct. Let's do one more. Let's say we want 9 times 6 this time. For the 9, I raise 1, 2, 3, 4 fingers and 1 is lowered. And for the 6, I have 1 raised finger and 1, 2, 3, 4 lowered fingers. I count the total number of raised fingers on my two hands. So I have 5 again times 10 plus 1 times 4, right? 1 times 4. And the result is 50 plus 4, which is 54. Again, correct. Let's do a stranger one now. Let's do 10 times 10. For 10, I have to raise all of my fingers on my left hand and again all of my fingers on my right hand. I count the total number of raised fingers on my two hands, which is 10. I multiply that by 10 and then I add 0 times 0 because I have no lowered fingers on either hand. And then the result is again 100, correct. Let's do one more where it looks like it might break down, but it doesn't really. Let's do 5 times 5. For 5, I have all of my 5 fingers lowered, and again the same here. I count the total number of raised fingers on my two hands, which is 0. So that's the number of tens, which looks wrong. But then I multiply this 5 by this 5, because all of them are lowered, and I get, obviously, 5 times 5, which is correct. Now, let's see why this looks so strange. Let's, let's take a look at, at this 7 times 8 example. So I have 7 times 8. What are these two raised fingers that I'm, I'm looking at? Well, remember that I had one more hand which I was hiding, right? I didn't see this. And the same here. I had one more hand which I was hiding. So these two guys are actually a part of my original 7, right? And these are a part of my original 8. Because if I'm adding these 5s to, to, to either side, then I actually get the, the raised fingers. Which is totally strange, because uh, what, I'm, what I'm asked to do in the trick is multiply these by, by 10, when in fact they are units originally. Not only that, but the, even stranger, I have to multiply these together, but what do these represent? Well, they're just leftover fingers. Look at this. I, I, I need these three in order to, to show eight, but these I don't actually need. These don't mean anything. I, I, I might not have them at all and I could still show eight. They're just a, a, a side effect of my hand having 10 fingers, so I have to hide them. Um, so this is, Totally counterintuitive. Why am I am I multiplying units by ten? And even stranger, stranger, I'm multiplying together fingers that I'm not using. I shouldn't be counting. So this is totally strange. Let's try to put this whole thing in, into a more algebraic form. If my v is seven, the value I'm trying to represent is seven. That for that v, the number of fingers up is v minus 5, right, because I'm, I, I, I'm hiding these fingers, so only the, the original value minus 5 is shown, and the number of fingers up 
is the, the, the total value I could possibly show, which is 10, minus whatever value I'm actually showing. That's the number of fingers I'm not using. The, the total possible minus the actual value. Let's actually try this out for, for this 7 so we can verify that it works. So if, if V is 7, then the number of fingers up is 7 minus 5, which is 2. Correct. Look at that. And if V is also 7, then this is 10 minus 7, which is 3. Also correct, because I actually have two, uh, three lowered fingers when, I, when I'm showing 7. So, with that in mind, let's see what happens when I'm actually working out this example. So, once again, let's take the, the uh, 7 times 8 example. We're not actually using this, but uh, I want you to see, to have a, a parallel representation of actual values and algebraic form. So, if my A, the, the, the value for my left hand is 7 and my B is 8, right? Then the number of uh, fingers up on my left hand will be A minus 5 and the number of fingers down on my left hand will be 10 minus A. And on the right hand it's the same. The number of fingers up is B minus 5 and the number of fingers down is 10 minus B. So what did I do next actually with these values? Well, I said that A times B is the number of fingers up on my left hand, which is A minus 5 times 10, plus the number of fingers up on my right hand, which is B minus 5 times 10, and then I multiplied together the number of fingers down on my two hands, which is 10 minus A times 10 minus 10 minus B. So, what does this whole thing equal? Well, a, minus, uh, a times 10 is 10a, uh, minus 5 times 10 is minus 50, b times 10 is 10b, minus 50 from this guy, and then 10 times 10 is 100, minus a times, times 10, which is a times 10, okay, uh, and then I'm doing um, 10b, plus, uh, minus 10b, sorry, minus 10b, and then plus AB, minus A times minus B is plus AB. Let's rewrite this nicer, in a nicer form. It's 10A, then minus 50 with minus 50 is minus 100, plus 10B, plus 100, this guy, minus 10A, minus 10B, plus AB. And this is where it gets interesting because minus 100 cancel out with plus 100, 10a with minus 10a, 10b with minus 10b, and I'm left with a times b, this guy. So, a times b equals a times b. Well, okay, that proves, that actually proves that this thing works. Also, one more interesting thing, notice how I, I didn't ever constrain a to 7 or 8, I didn't even constrain them to something between 5 and 10. A could be minus 40, B could be, I don't know, 157, it would still work. But it's only interesting when you can actually do things with, with, with your hands. So, I actually found out about this whole thing on SNBC, the um, Saturday morning breakfast cereal uh, website, um, which uh, in a comic which appeared in uh, June 2010, and the the trick was um, found in a book by Mr. Uh, Dr. Dennis Shasha, a computer scientist, a science teacher at NYU, in a book called The Puzzlers, The Puzzlers Illusion, Illusion. Uh, which appeared in uh, 2006 and the the comic which is linked below the book is also linked below by the way the comic is is quite brilliant in in capturing the the two feelings that you get when you see this this thing working because you you have a, a, a this satisfaction of 
seeing things click each and every time but then you you're also annoyed that that it doesn't make sense and then when you when you actually prove that it works you're totally frustrated because yes we now know that it works but you have no insight you know you, you can't internalize any of this these mechanisms you don't understand why they work so what i did and what i tend to do when when i when i encounter problems like this is i try to to visualize to actually visualize the the things that are happening there so before we do that let's recap how you represent numbers in a in a graphical in a visual form let's say i have the number seven how do i represent that visually well i draw an axis and then i look where my value would be represented and it's right here now let's assume i wanted to represent seven minus five well i could calculate this arithmetically and find that it's here but i could also represent this this the subtraction, the, the operation itself, by by showing this segment here, right? It's still two; it's the, the same value as as this one here, but it's more more satisfactory to see it where it actually took place, where the operation actually actually took place. Now let's let's do multiplication. Let's say I want to do four times three. I draw two axes this time. And now the, the multiplication, the result of the multiplication is this rectangle right here, right? 4 times 3. This whole rectangle here is the result of multiplying 4 and 3, this guy here. And that's correct because if I actually break it down into small squares, in unit squares, and I count them, I find that it actually contains, the rectangle contains 12 units. Now with that in mind, let's try to represent this thing in a graphical form. I'm going to draw uh, two axes like I did for the multiplication. And now I'm going to use the examples that we used before with A equals 7 and B equals 8 just because I have to draw the value somewhere. So let's say that this is my A, this value here is my A, the 7, and this value here is my B, the 8. Okay, so now let's consider that first term we used in the, in the calculation before, which is A minus 5, right? A, this is A, minus 5 is this segment here, right? That's A minus 5. But what did I do with the A minus 5? Well, I multiplied that by 10. And I have to represent that here as well. So I draw a rectangle, a tall rectangle, 10 units tall, to represent A minus 5 times 10, right? This is the number of raised fingers on my left hand multiplied by 10. Now I'm going to do the same thing for B minus 5, which is this segment here. And once again, that also has to be multiplied by 10, right? So I have to draw a wide rectangle, 10 units wide, to represent that number, which is the number of raised fingers on my right hand multiplied by 10. Now, I'm left with this guy here. 10 minus A times 10 minus B. Well, 10 minus A is this segment here. This guy here. This is 10 minus A, right? And 10 minus B is this segment here. This is 10 minus B. So this times this is exactly this times this, right? So it's this rectangle right here. This is the number of lowered hands uh, of lowered fingers on my two hands multiplied together. Now, let's take a look because you remember I said we are going to represent the the example 
uh, 7, A equals 7 and B equals 8, just because I have to represent something in this diagram. But maybe A is larger, maybe it's smaller. What happens with this, with this diagram when A is bigger or smaller? Well, if A moves, then this vertical line of this rectangle will also move to the right or to the left. But this line, the line for 5, does not move because it's always a minus 5, it's not a minus something variable. So this line, this stays put, right? This doesn't move. This might move to the left or to the right, but this doesn't. The same goes for b. The b line can move up and down, but this line for 5 remains here. In other words, this rectangle is bound to the left. It can, its right side can move, but the left side can't move. The same with, with this rectangle. The bottom side can move, the top side cannot move. One more observation. Notice how in this area, this rectangle here, I have, I'm, I'm counting a part of this tall rectangle and also a part of this wide rectangle. So this rectangle is counted twice. That means that I, I could peel away one, one layer from this rectangle and I would still be left with this inverse L shape filled in completely, right? Even if I peeled off this one layer from, from this rectangle, this would still remain uh, filled in. But if I do that, if I peel off one, one uh, layer from this, then I will still remain with this square filled in, right? But notice how this square and this square and this square and this square are all equal. So I could take this red square here and I could move it in here, couldn't I? But if I did that, then this bit here plus the green bit around it equals this, this rectangle here, right? So remember, I don't have this guy anymore, but because I moved it here. So the result is actually this yellow rectangle. But what is this yellow rectangle? Well, it's A times B. So that's why it works. I'm not saying that now that you've seen this, you have a, a deep understanding an, an internal, you know, meaningful understanding of how precisely this, this works. But I hope you, you, you have gained a better appreciation of how complex this thing really is. I mean, in the algebraic form, it, it looks like things are cancelling out and they are cancelling out because you're, you're, you're moving this bit from here to here and they are cancelling out. But in fact, what you're doing is that you're adding up this rectangle and this rectangle and this small rectangle, which is equivalent to this yellow rectangle, which is in fact the A times B. So I, I hope this, this helps uh, bring you a better understanding of the thing. Now, this video has ended, but I wanted to share um, a bit about the making of the video. This is the first time I'm, I'm doing anything like this. And I was amazed at the amount of effort required to make it. I want to show you how many uh, drafts I had for, for this video, right? This is only a part of it. This is the rest of it. Look at that. It is amazingly time consuming. Well, I'm, I'm obviously, uh, English is my second lang language, so I'm struggling with that as well. But still it's amazing how much time you have to, to dedicate to these things to make them work. And this has given me a, a, a much better appreciation of uh, people doing this uh, well professionally or, uh, or at least doing them right because this was obviously a bit clumsy and still I had to put in, I don't know, uh, more than half a day to make it. So do, do try to appreciate the, the people that are doing these things because they are amazing people.